Welcome back to Underwater Math. Today, we're going to go to compare fractions without models. Without models? What? How are we supposed to do that? We know that when we use models, the models need to be the same size. But when we're not using models, it will help us to have the same number of total parts or the same denominator. To do that, we need to find an equivalent fraction for each fraction we are comparing. While making sure our equivalent fractions have a common denominator, there are a couple ways to find the common denominator. The shortcut way is to multiply the denominator of the first fraction by the denominator of the second fraction. This will always work to find a common denominator, and it is quick, but it will not always give you the least common multiple. Let's compare two-thirds and three-fifths. If we multiply these denominators, three and five, we get 15. Now find an equivalent fraction for each fraction we are comparing that has a denominator of 15 for two-thirds. We multiplied the denominator by 5 to get 15. So we have to multiply the numerator by 5 also. 2 times 5 equals 10. So, 2 thirds is equivalent to 10 fifteenths. For 3 fifths, we multiplied the denominator by 3 to get 15. So we have to multiply the numerator by 3 also. 3 times 3 equals 9. So, 3 fifths is equivalent to 9 fifteenths. Now we can easily compare 10 fifteenths to 9 fifteenths and see that 10 fifteenths is larger. Therefore, 2 thirds is greater than 3 fifths. Let's compare 2 thirds and 5 sixths. We can multiply the denominators together, 3 times 6, to get 18. Then when we multiply the numerators to make equivalent fractions, we get 12 eighteenths and 15 eighteenths. We can compare these and see that 15 eighteenths, or 5 sixths, is greater. But did you notice that the denominator, 6, is a multiple of the other denominator, 3? We can make equivalent fractions with the least common multiple of the two denominators. So all we have to do here is find the equivalent fraction of two-thirds with a denominator of six. Then the two fractions will have the same denominator. Three times two equals six. So let's multiply the numerator by two also. Two times two equals four. Now we can compare four sixths to five sixths, and we see that five sixths is greater. Let's look at the fractions. Three fourths and five sixths. Again, we could just multiply the denominators together, 4 times 6, to get a common denominator of 24. But, us teachers like to see you use the least common multiple as the common denominator. Make a list of the first few multiples of each denominator, until you find a multiple that is the same from both lists. For 3 fourths, let's list the multiples of 4, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, for 5 sixths, let's list the multiples of 6, 6, 12, 18, 24. Aha! Uh -huh. There's a 12 in common between both lists. That's right. And since 12 is the smallest number in common between both lists, it is the least common multiple, and we will use that as our denominator. Now, let's get our equivalent fractions with a denominator of 12, so we can compare. 4 times 3 equals 12, so multiply the numerator by 3 also. 3 times 3 equals 9. 6 times 2 equals 12, so multiply the numerator by 2 also. 5 times 2 equals 10. Now we can compare 9 twelfths to 10 twelfths. 10 twelfths, or 5 sixths, is greater. Great work today. I think you've earned a beach day.